Okay, so um, I want to show kind of the whole process from start to finish of getting a, a model into uh, Unity and making it look as good as possible. So I wanted to pick like a model that had some decent amount of detail. I like this model um, I found on Sketchfab. This is by the user Ternio. Um, and I was just looking at uh, nice downloadable humans. So let's download this guy. It's available in two formats, OBJ and GLTF. You can get GLTF into Unity. It takes some doing to make it work. We should get the OBJ. Um, uh, so I'm going to bring it down. Now, in Sketchfab, it'll show how many um, uh, triangles and verts there are. So um, this is pretty high poly for Unity. Um, I like to... Um, I like to work with 100,000 max polygons. Um, more than that, Unity doesn't handle really high poly models well. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to do what's called um, uh, we're going to do what's called decimating the mesh, reducing the polygon count. And we're going to do this using MeshLab. You can download MeshLab. Um, just Google it. You'll find it right here. Um, uh, I already have it on my computer, so let's open it up um, and uh, I already downloaded this and unzipped this model. Um, so if we look inside, uh, the way um, uh, this is how, um, uh, what call it? This is how uh, Sketchfab organ organizes their models: is there's stuff in source and textures. So this is pretty straightforward. There we have a object file, a material file, and a texture. So this is the the root of that. I'm going to go here and go to file import mesh, um, and then I'm going to go into my downloads folder, and uh, let's find, so here's my guy, he's in source, and there, and here's my, here's my folder. So, all right, he's in, um, and this isn't a complete head, like it's a, a it's the front of someone's head, that's okay, we'll work with it. Um, so, uh, you can see 200,000 faces, we want to reduce that to 100,000. So we're going to go to Filters, Remeshing, Simplification, Reconstruction, and then this thing called Quadratic Edge Collapse de Decimation with Texture. That's important. Um, it's going to bring up this whole dialog. You put in the target number of faces, and I'm going to check two things, Preserve Boundary of Mesh and Preserve Normal. Then hit Apply. And it's going to crunch on this for a second. You're not going to see a difference. Um, not that obvious of a change from 200,000 to 100,000. Um, so I take this, and this is now, and you can see down here, this now has 100,000 polygons. So now I'm going to export this mesh again as an OBJ, and I'm going to call it like uh, Stuart. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to go into Unity. Um, so uh, to get started, I'm going to um, uh, make a folder uh, for my models. Um, and let's go grab this guy. So here's my 100,000 polygons. Um, and I don't care about the MTL file. Unity actually completely ignores it. I care about the texture and the OBJ. So I'm going to pull those in. Um, and it's going to crunch for a sec. And here they are. So now. Um, it pulls this in, and I'm going to put this at 0, 0, 0. And one thing you'll see is it's off-center, and it's some weird size. So let's scale it up. The other thing you'll see is there's no texture on this guy. Um, so let's rotate him just so we can see his face. No texture. Um, so it's an uncolored mesh. Here's the texture, but you can't just drag a texture onto the model. The way you do it in Unity is you make a material. So I right-click and go to Create Material. Um, and then I'm going to drag this texture onto, whoops, drag this texture onto the albedo. Um, and when you create a material, the smoothness is set to like 0.5. That's going to give it a kind of a plasticky look. I'm going to set it to zero to give it a matte surface. And then I just drag the material and release it onto my model. Now I have a textured guy. That's looking pretty good. So now let's drop the hollow play SDK on top of that. So I go into hollow play, here's hollow play capture, and I drag that guy on top. Um, 
and I'm going to put the hollow place decay at 0, 0, 0. All right, so uh, now I'm going to bring up the... Uh, I'm going to also put a camera on here so we can kind of watch it. Um, so I'm going to pull it up in, uh, uh, in the looking glass as well. Now, for starters, looking glass is looking from this direction, and my guy's looking the other way. So let's, whoops, uh, let's grab my guy and get him into place. And see how he's off-center? That's kind of annoying. So I do a little trick. Um, I'm going to um, make a, a parent game object. Uh, let's call this, like, the head. Um, and I'm going to drag him inside of it. So um, head... Uh, we're going to start, head is going to start at 0, 0, 0, and scale is 1, 1, 1. So head is completely ordinary. Now this guy, I'm going to line him up so inside of the head, um, he comes in looking straight ahead and is at a same scale and is centered at 0, 0, 0. Um, so let's scale him up a little bit. And then let's move them over. So the way I'm, what I'm doing um, is using the Q, W, E, R, T keys. Those are shortcuts to Q gives me grab, W gives me move the position, E gives me rotate, R gives me scale, T gives me, I don't know what T gives me. Um, and uh, so I'm going to move this guy right smack into the middle um, of that scene. So um, that's looking pretty good. He's still rotated a little around, so let's move him around. Um, so that he's he's smack in the middle, and then he's also a little bit for, a little bit back. So let's bring him up. So this line right here shows the focal plane of the scene. So that's the crispest looking place you can get for a model. Um, so I'm gonna uh, you generally want your models to be right smack in the middle. So now. Uh, I'm really going to start to think about how it looks in the looking glass. He's a little bit small, so I'm going to scale him up um, uh, to kind of fill up. Oh, and now that he's centered, rather than scale the model and have to like deal with him being offset, I'm going to scale the parent game object. So the cool thing about this parent is now when I rotate, I'm rotating him right around the center. That's like a nice hack. Same with scaling. And like uh, Whatever the offset that model comes in, I can... that. That whole issue goes completely is is completely moot. Um, I uh, I now am just dealing with a guy with a model that's nicely set at zero zero zero. Um, so um, all right, so here's my model. Um, that's looking pretty good. Um, he looks a little bit flat and lifeless. Um, no offense. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna play with the lighting on this guy. And I'm also going to add a post-process stack. So the post-process stack gives me a lot of control over the shaders that render it. And it's really just a collection of like a gigantic pile of like a crazy shaders that um, let me adjust this. So to do this, I'm going to go into the asset store, and Unity releases this for free. So I'm going to search for post-processing. And this thing here, this is Unity Essentials post-processing stack. And if you, I've already downloaded it, um, so I just have to click import. If you haven't, download it. So, um, oh my. Uh, uh, oh, okay, whatever. Okay. Now let, now let's import. Um, so it's going to crunch in. It takes a moment because it has like a bajillion shaders. Um, uh, and the way the post-processing stack works is uh, once it's inside your project, you, um, you think of it like um, you can add it to any camera, and that adjusts how that camera renders. So in our case, we're going to add it to the camera inside Holoplay Capture. And I'll show you I'll show you this in just a sec once it finishes coming in. Okay, so in Holoplay Capture, if you open that up, you'll notice there's a camera in here. 
and I'm going to go to this and add a post-processing behavior. And the post-processing behavior wants to take a post-processing profile. So I'm going to make a new folder to stick this in. Um, uh, go into there and right-click and say create, uh, where to go, post-processing profile. I'm just going to call it post. Cool. I'm going to go back to my scene. And these are all the things in my post-processing uh, like profile that I can adjust. So I'm going to go and add this to my camera. Um, one other thing you'll see is um, Unity Scene, uh, by default, creates a main camera. We don't need this. It doesn't do anything good for us. I'm just going to delete it. Um, it's useless in my scene. Um, so now I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to double-click on this, and I'm going to just kind of play with these. So some good things to play with are ambient occlusion. Um, uh, so you can kind of watch. These are all, like, relatively subtle changes, but oops, uh, it helps to... In my, in my view, it helps to make the, um, the textures of an object feel a lot more believable. Um, and you can play with, like, I really suggest you play with this um, in different lightings. You, like, these are all kind of, these are all helpful to get, uh, to, to get, like, a nice believable effect. And some of these are more, are drastic changes, others are subtle, um, but uh, they're all going to kind of add up. Um, Another thing I get a lot of mileage out of is this color grading. Um, so, uh, and when I'm playing with this, what I'm really doing is I'm looking at the looking glass, not on my screen, because I want to see how it looks in there. So even kind of simple stuff like setting a lighting, um, instead of having that light be kind of a neutral, uh, a neutral white, I might give it like a warmer tone a little bit. Um, and this all just kind of helps that model, helps bring that model to life. Um, uh, and same with uh, anything from like a, tweaking the temperature of that render um, uh, somewhere in between um, like for people I generally like to go like towards a warmer temperature um, uh, so these two get us a lot um, you can also play with depth of field so um, especially with models that are very far or very close with this guy I kind of want his face to be in, like, the full of his face to be in focus. But, for example, this lets you kind of simulate the f-stop of a camera. So that one is quite blurry. Um, uh, and starting to adjust, like, I, it's, it's adding uh, blur, more blur to things that are forward or back in the focal plane. Um, so uh, that's... Uh, and just like with a regular camera, the smaller your aperture, um, the more in focus. Like a pinhole camera, everything's in focus. For this guy, um, I, he's so like condensed, I don't really care. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to play with lighting. So um, I'm going to make a, another folder just to organize this um, for lights. Um, so right now, I have one directional light in the scene. Um, and if I look at it, it's looking uh, kind of like down. It's lighting from above. Um, so I might, uh, so I can play with this just by um, changing the rotation of these. Um, and what I think I would do is uh, move these lights around. Directional lights don't have any spread. It's a it's a plane wave. It's a uniform plane of light. There's no. Um, it doesn't act like a real world light. So what I might add is a spot. Um, so uh, I'm going to throw this right here. And I'm going to turn off the directional for a second. And instead, use this spot. Um, so um, spot, um, I'm right now pointing down. Um, and if I, I'm going to look and kind of see how I am. So it sets up right, it's set up right in the middle of his face. So I'm going to pull it back and uh, kind of aim it. And you can see um, it starts out very, very subtly. Um, I'm going to widen the spot angle. That's the, so that's the width of the beam. Um, and the range I'm going to extend um, to much longer. So this is now a softer light. Um, it's kind of nice. Um, and um, the intensity I might also change. So I might want something brighter. Um, 
So now we're kind of, and I'm just like playing with this. So I like to think of this kind of like a photo studio. Um, so I'm thinking about how I'm arranging my lights. I might pull it off a little more to the side and light more from this, this edge. Um, and then uh, I'll even out those shadows. So I'm going to uh, click on this and duplicate it. And I'll bring this, this next light over to the other side and rotate it back around. So now I have a pretty well lit face. Um, I might light it a little more from the center because uh, I see like his his nose is pretty dark and his like the center of his nose is in shadow. Um, um, but that's starting to feel like a well lit scene to me. Um, I think lighting is super duper important. And generally, for something that I want to look like a portrait, like this to me feels a lot like a portrait, um, I want to use lights like I would use when I'm shooting a portrait. Um, I think this light, this one is a little bit blown out, so I'll dim the, dim the intensity a little bit. So I was getting this reflection off his forehead right there. Um, so this is pretty close to a scene that looks good in a looking glass. It feels way more realistic. And just to kind of go back and show those differences, um, here's let's let's pull these back and I'll I'll kind of toggle back and forth between how it looked like before we did any of this and how it looked like after. Um, so let's turn these off and let's do a little before. Um, so this is just with the straight directional light, and let's turn off the post-processing stack. Um, so that's before, uh, and just bringing on the post-processing stack kind of warms those colors um, and changing our lights um, and pulling off that like harsh directional light really softens this image. It makes it feel more like a portrait. Um, the only things I might do are the scan itself, like the hair tends to come very look very plasticky in a scan. Um, and uh, it's hard to say exactly what I can do to, to fix this. Um, um, oh, one last thing I will change is the shadows. So in each of the lights, they're by default, they're set to no shadows. I'm going to turn on hard shadows on both of these lights. Um, and uh, this is important because if I take an object and I actually want them to, again, like to actually cast a shadow, um, uh, this lets me relight a scene like this from another side. Um, so you can see like his nose right there is casting a shadow onto his cheek from that light. Uh, uh, so this is good. Like uh, it gives me kind of a, a lot of control over how my, my object ends up looking and feeling. So that's all there is to it. It's not, there's not rocket science. It's just a bunch of steps. Um, and, and you can do it. Too.